Hello and welcome to the Deluxe Show. I'm Georgie Courage Cole and joining me on the sofa today are Lou Hoff and new member of the SL team, Winnie Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Welcome ladies. Today we'll be discussing what traits we look for in a man plus our silver fox crushes and finally due to popular request what we carry in our handbags later. OK Magazine's former showbiz editor is here to give us the latest celebrity gossip. Plus, we have a new fashion haul for you. And finally, SL's wellness editor tour is back with her latest in her wellness series. But first, welcome, Winnie. Hello. Week two at Sheerlux, and we've put you on the sofa. Um, <laughs> I know, so, like... respect to you, you were up for it, and here you are. I know, thrown in the deep end, but I'm so happy to be here. Oh, and it feels great. Yeah. Good. Well, we've got lots of fun stuff to talk about today. We're all sitting here. It <laughs> feels very odd sitting here with our bags. <laughs> bags. Anyway, we're going, to be, we're going to be going through the contents of them later. I was always brought up not to look at another woman's bag. My mother used to get really cross when I rifled through her bag, <laughs> breaking all the rules. Um, anyway, there was a survey out yesterday highlighting what British women look for in a man. I mean, I don't know what we do without these surveys coming out all the time. <laughs> Informing all our content. Exactly. Um, anyway, it said that the majority of British women, well, 51%, of British women believe a tidy bedroom is crucial to attractiveness. Just 5% said the same about good looks and 4% said they feel this way about wealth. I mean, my instant reaction was, what a load of shit. <laughs> uh, although I do hate a messy man. I can't cope with that. Can't deal with that. Yeah. Can't deal with that. My husband used to have a chair that he put things on and I would take the, con the what was on the chair and I'd just stuff it in the back of his cupboard until he got the drill that okay. we couldn't pile up on the chair. Lou. Yes. Well, I know what she's going to say. I know her this well. Um, I think we're all going to say the same. Yeah. What do you look for in a man? We, we don't always for. It, I think kindness is the number one. I think when you are looking for a life partner, they have got to be kind. They're going to treat you well. And yeah, I think that's the most important. But another one, I think, is got to be someone that you feel completely comfortable at your most raw with. Because again, you know, you've got years with this person. Mm. So you've got to feel comfortable and in your own skin and happy. And, and they, they bring out the best in you yes. as well. I think you've got to feel... In, and it's a similar point, I guess, on a level playing field with yeah. that. Yeah. You know, you, you, I, maybe you just see it in movies, but women who sort of wake up and they quickly sneak into the bathroom and put loads of makeup on. Yeah. Like, you've got to be able to look your shittest exactly. and feel like you're still loved. I think that's really yeah. important. If you yeah. always feel like you've got to be the best version of yourself around your partner. Yeah. Then, I actually hate that word partner, but anyway, I'm using it. Um, <laughs> around your partner, then that's not a great basis, I think. Yeah. They've got to accept you, flaws and all. Flaws and all, bags, greasy yeah. hair, tracky bums and all. Yeah. Uh, Winnie, what about you? I think I'm most interested in a guy who picks up on the little things that I like without me having to tell him. Okay. I want him to be able to notice, oh, I quite like that, and he will have a mental note and then... Yes. And, just, it. and clock it, clock it, and basically know me. Yeah. So I don't have to sit down and tell him everything. Just okay. so he cares. Um, well, it's kind of kindness. Yeah, it's though, kind isn't of it? yeah. It's like kindness. So someone who's really caring and wants to know everything about me and is happy to know everything about me. And wants to learn it. You're right. Rather yeah. than you tell them. But, well. but, but not too wet. I mean, can we yeah. just? Yeah. Just <laughs> I don't want a drip of a man. Yeah. I, I need a man that's going to put his arm around me and tell me it's all going to be okay. Exactly. When coronavirus hits or whatever <laughs> shit that life throws at you. Um, yes. And you've got to be, you've got to fancy them, right? 100%. And I want them to be able to take me out for dinner and I want them to open the car door. You know, I want it all. I want yeah. it all. Yeah. Girls. Don't we all? You know, don't we all? Yeah. Um, anyway. This, this, this man chat got us on... Well, there was another survey, actually, that, that was talking about um, older men and the whole wealth thing and, you know, did, did younger women fancy older men because of the money? And anyway, we're not going to talk about that, um, but we were going to talk about, do we have, you know, a secret older crush? Who, who's our silver fox, basically? And I, I had to really think hard about this. I don't know if, now that I'm getting older... The people that I thought were attractive now got so much older. <laughs> they're kind of like way past it. Uh, my mum would say, you don't want to go out with a man like ridiculously older because when men get old, they kind of smell and, you know, they become, you know, quite, what's the word? Um, when you always think you're ill. Hypochondriacs. Hypochondriacs and they sort of smell and their hygiene and stuff like that. So I've always thought I don't want too big an age gap. Yeah. Anyway, who, Winnie, who is your crush? Is there someone that's significantly older that you think, hmm? 
Mm, I quite like Patrick Dempsey. I know. Yeah. Good one. I think he's just really gorgeous. Um, yeah, I like. How old is he? He's on the he, list. He's how old is he? I Fifty-four. Like, Fifty-four. So he's kind of silverish. Yeah. But if I had to go for someone really silver fox, um, what's his name? Richard Gere. But when he's like not now, now. Of oh, Richard Gere. Obviously, Br Richard Gere. Gere like is oh. the dream. Can I just say that last night when I was thinking about who mine was, I thought I was like, well, who was it when I was growing up? Yeah. And I thought Richard Gere. Yeah. But then didn't he do like some dodgy stuff? And I was like, oh, I don't oh, know if wait. you're allowed to say I don't, he's, Gere he's gone like into a new age of older now. He, that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, Roger Moore, James Bond. Yes. When I was yeah. a child, <laughs> he's like a geriatric. <laughs> <laughs> there's Silver Fox and then there's OAP, isn't there? Uh, anyway, we're clearly all on the same on yeah, the same yeah. when it comes to Richard Gere. We are hilarious. Patrick Dempsey, I like that one. Uh, Lou. We've got, we've got a similar one. We were going through the notes and Georgie read mine. She was like, oh, he's mine too. So mine would be Josh Duhamel. Duhamel? Duhamel. Duhamel. Who, who knows? Tomato, tomato. Um, I don't know I'm asking you about pronunciation. I know, I know. Anyway, I mean, what a hunk. He mm. is. We were trying to remember. There have been two films that I've been to when I've sat there and thought, oh my God, I'm literally staring at the hottest men. And it's Josh DeHamel, whatever his name is, in Win a Date with Tad Hamilton. <laughs> Don't know if you've seen that movie. <laughs> anyway, it's not a great film, but he is beautiful yeah. in it. And the other is Chris Hemsworth in Rush. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. Chris Hemsworth is... He's, he's a bit, good, isn't he? He's, he's, <laughs> and someone, so Hodge, our show manager did point out that he's younger than me, yeah. so I can't really have him on the list. I have to also say one more. When I was growing up, my like ultimate dream man was Brian from, um, from oh my God, what's it called? Miracle on 44th Street, who was played <gasps> by Dylan <gasps> Oh my God, so yes. I'm really so excited about him. Yeah, I, I remember just watching him because he looked after a little girl who was wearing this cream cable knit jumper. I just thought mm. you. <laughs> That's my future husband right there. He so we watched that as a family this Christmas, and that that you have absolutely nailed it. I was <laughs> watching him in his role there. Like, yeah, he was just the most handsome, like stereotypically handsome. Yeah, man. But, and he was just so caring as well for the family, and kind. yeah, he just kind exactly. Kind. The shoulder pads in his jacket were out of control. Anyway, yeah. it's such great film. Exactly. That's so funny that you said that. Uh, well, mine, mine's Idris Elba. I oh. Mean, he also just doesn't age. He's so sexy. Yeah. He's such a man. Um, anyway, mine's Idris. I had Chris on there, but he's he is younger than me, as so I pointed <laughs> out. Um, Eric Banner. I feel like he's not as hot as he was. No, I'm not no. getting any. No. Okay, fine. Um, well, they, those are mine. And Josh DeHamel. Yeah. Who's now divorced from Fergie. Yeah. From the Black Eyed Peas. Um, we were going to talk about women. You know, silver women. What do you call the, silver. the female of a silver fox? Gorgeous older women. Gorgeous yeah. older women. Um, and and I know we're almost running out of time, but who who are the women that you look up to who are older who you think are really attractive? Nigella Lawson. I love know. you, picked her. I just, yeah. I just love her. Like she's really sexy. She is. She's just just classically beautiful in her own way, and she dresses for her shape. Yeah. And she's sixteen. You would never know. She, she's just right, I think. That's yeah. mine. Anyway. She oozes. Sort of yeah, she's seductive. Yeah. 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 I love it. Love her no. too. The mine is Lauren Hutton, who just... Such a good pick. She mm. is just so gorgeous. A lot of it also comes from her style as well, but mm. she's really kept that. She's such a classic beauty um, and has kind of always been someone that I've looked up to um, in terms of her kind of grace and her age and elegance. And yeah, I just think she's stunning. So do I, so do I. Well, I had Kareem Rockfield on here, who I, I always bring up, but she's just, she's also just so sexy. Yeah. And yeah. what is she, 65, Kareem? Yeah. And I mean, she like pulls off leopard print and a smoky eye like no one else. <laughs> no one can wear a pencil skirt like her. Oh, and she's just, she's such yeah. a, she, she makes me feel like quite excited about the future. Um, I suppose I'll be around. Uh, we're going to talk about what's in our handbags. This is this is due to popular demand. I would say, do people really want to know how we all got the same things in our handbag? <laughs> Winnie, what's in yours? Uh, I'm hoping there's some beauty inspiration. There is some beauty in okay. there. So my first one, I think we talked about this the other day. I need to say that you, you worked for Fenty Beauty. I did, um, yeah. As a makeup artist. So, you know, I'm expecting some good tips here. <laughs> the first one is a Fenty product. Okay, I don't know if right. you... <laughs> So I have the What It Do um, facial spray. So I love this. I like a facial spray because I'm someone who applies powder all the time. So this, a facial spray is good for like melting powder 
And I like this one because you can almost use it as a primer as well. So you can pop it on before your foundation to moisturize your skin, during the application for blending and after to set. So it's just like a three in one. Amazing. Amazing. So, so that's, that's my what first you... one. Okay, that's number one. Number two is, it's not beauty because. Okay, that's fine. It's a protein. Oh, right, lovely. Yeah, so I have the Grenade Carb Killer Protein Bar. Like, I love white chocolate so much. And so do I. I love white chocolate. Oh, so this is really yummy. It tastes really good. It's kind of caramelly, low carb, high protein. And if I'm on the go or if I've missed lunch or dinner, like, I'll just grab this. Which, now that we're back to work, that kind of thing's yeah, quite good Yeah, you need to have nice nicely back. Yeah, it I'm does starving happen. this morning, I need one of those. And my third one is this little perfume diffuser I got off Amazon. So I used to always carry around my big perfumes. It's awful, right? I used to carry my perfumes around with me. Never. Until, yeah, never. And my friend was like, okay, here, bought me a little perfume diffuser. How do you get it out of the bottle of fragrance you, into the diffuser? So you pop the top off the... Um, the perfume yeah and then you literally it's got a little hole and you just pump it and it shows you how much it fills up ah. so i've got my vera wang in here and so going brilliant out. brilliant i need one of those nice. that was three quid really on good. amazon yeah amazing that's a great tip it's really good okay you've got two more let's run through those quickly you've got a dyson wide tooth comb yes i have I'm, this oh, oh, oh i see a tooth comb i thought it was something to do with your teeth i was like whoa that, whoa. Is, that is wide <laughs> a big toothbrush in it okay this is the dyson wide tooth comb it's so good because it detangles you can take it in the shower because i like to brush like through my hair in the shower and if you take a brush in that it's not going to work and this is really good so oh yeah detangles in the shower get your conditioner through it and just throughout the day it's it's really great. I've never seen a comb like that. Love that. No, I haven't either. My mother always had a comb in her bag. As a child, I always remember just combing, combing her hair, but it was perhaps small and pink. Yes, yeah, so this one's quite like multi -purpose. And finally, you've got a lip pencil. Yeah, so this one is my MAC lip pencil in chestnut. So I have darker skin and it's great. I can line my lip, I can do my brows, I can do it all, obviously sharpen in your between. Lips, I mean, your lips are just insane. I mean, talk <laughs> about, I'm sitting here with like no top lip. I'm like Stop. looking at hey. your lips. Okay, so this is really good. That's what I need, a matte lip pencil. <laughs> yeah. Um, amazing, thank you. Lou, what have you got for us? Um, quite some quite similar things actually. I've literally got so much in here right now. This is I've got why I always think this thing. isn't a great feature because, <laughs> because it was all we've all so got similar. the car keys and there's something. But I still think people want to know. Okay, um, so. As a facial spray as well, I always have the Quarterly Beauty Elixir. I also have one of these in my handbag and one of them by my desk. Not an ad, she is genuinely... Yeah, literally. I've got a whole lot of stuff. Literally, literally nearly product. empty. Yeah, I didn't get any one. Um, little mini perfume. This is the Anina Bing Savage Rose. Um, mm. And it is a little roll-on, which is lush. Sorry, I didn't know she had a fragrance. Can we oh smell? Oh, yeah. Ooh. I'm going to love it, I know. I love a roll-y. It's they so seem nice. To last Ooh, it's very rose. Yeah. It also comes in a candle. Mm, it's really nice. Plush. It's really nice. Such good little size again. Perfect. Sorry, we're ta oh, Corona touching. Oh, I bet. E I'm going to get a um, off after this. The best lip balm ever, Leave Lom Eve Lom Kiss Mix. Oh, it's like yeah. minty spearmint. Gives a nice little gloss. You're so loyal. I love that she's so loyal. You've, I mean, you've sworn by yeah. that for, for as long as I've known you. Um, what else? Oh, always a hairband. Never go, never go anywhere without a hairband. These are the slip ones. Oh yeah. Um, Although I never see you wear your hair up. No, but sometimes you need to. Yeah, okay. um, a little diary. I um, I don't like having a diary on my phone. I don't like going digital. So every year, my mum always gets me one of these little moleskin. Do you really ones. write all your what you're doing yep. down in the diary? Yeah. Yep, it's got little stickers at the back as well. Anyway, Excellent. I've got ye literally years and years of these. Um, Do you keep them? Yeah, keep them all. Love it. Um, what else? Oh, a little fan as well. When it's been, oh God, hang on, can I get that out? When it's been seriously hot, a fan. A real, a real fan. No oh, way. That's so oh. nice. <laughs> Only you could. Is that serious? You sit there on the tube and do that? Yep, I'm on the bus when it's lit. It's been so that's baking. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so chic. So chic. Love it. Amazing. Um, that, this is fun, actually. Okay, mine. What is in here? I think everyone's seen all mine before loads of times. Okay, Diet Coke, obviously. What else? Can't remember what I wrote on my list. So I have got, oh, I've got my Celine sunglasses. The, I'm a real Celine sunglasses fan. I've got to be quick. I'm getting looks about the time. Anyway, these are my favourite. These are the butterfly ones. Yes. 
I, I kind of only really wear Celine sunglasses, actually. Mm. I just think they're the best. Um, what else have I got? My Clarins. Um, what's it called? Lip Perfector, number five. I mean, so I talk good. about this all the time. Number five is the best colour. My Touche Eclair. This wasn't on the list, so there's no assets. I'm sorry, I'm breaking all the rules. But you, we talked about, you talked about powder. powder. This is so good if you get shiny. This is the Rodial, um, what's it called? Translucent HD powder. But it's Ooh. really, really light. And if you get a bit shiny, just especially on camera, Ooh. really Tizo. good. Nice. Really rate that. Um, bit of hand gel, face mask. I'm really showing you the contents of my bag. Can I talk about this face mask? Hanzine. Fits on my Instagram. Love that one. It's so light. It doesn't yeah. get hot. Uh, and it's black. Like it's quite nice for winter, isn't it? What else? Oh, I've got, I've got a lipstick. I'm going on way too long. And finally, finally, this is a really good tip. Actually, I feel like with smaller bags, I used to carry a really big wallet. Yeah. I don't know about you two, but do you remember the days when you used to, it's, used to have, it's oh, like yeah. carrying a briefcase it's in heavy. my bag. And then I got a small bag. Okay, Actually, I got it for Crossroady. And this is, I've given this to a few girlfriends. This is a Convergasson, and I think it's, the ch it's changed slightly so the zip goes all the way around. Yeah. But it's just a really good size, and I have had now a small wallet for years. I need a little one. Mm. So I think um, it's a really good range. If you want a small wallet that's not stupid money, then okay. check them out. Anyway, we're nearly out of time. We're really nearly out of time. We were just going to talk about New York Fashion Week. Yes. Because it's the first fashion week. It's the first fashion week since, well, it's the first fashion week sort of in Corona. In fact, yeah. no, there was some... There Copenhagen, was, we had. There, yes, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, it's big September time and it, it's very different to normal, right? It is, def yeah. I mean, the, it's different in the fact that there's not huge amounts of guests going to these shows. Um, they're still happening. Some of them are physical. Some of them are just digital. Some of them are just kind of doing shoots. Um, so obviously they're just adapting to the times. And you know, recently anyway, so many shows have been live streamed mm. and you, you kind of, the public have got access to them. So it's not a huge amount of difference in that sense. Um, but Ella Johnson was last night and oh my God, it was amazing. So cool. You see like everyone is kind of using the New York uh, rooftops now mm -hmm. to the max. Um, Jason Wu had an incredible one. It was kind of like a secret to loom um, set up. But yeah, Ulla Johnson, incredible skyline of New York behind, behind the models and it was gorgeous. Um, and I still loved it. Yeah. Regardless of the fact that there wasn't, be... wasn't any people watching. I hope, I'm hoping there's going to be a bit of people watching, yeah. Yeah. but it, it's just going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah. I was saying to Sean at the other day, I read an article um, in The Times which said that New York Fashion Week contributes 600 million to the New York economy, which is more than the US Open. And I was just so sort That's of mad. staggered to yeah. read that. And, and people who aren't into fashion think it's sort of frivolous and, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's not. It's a serious it's a massive industry that's yeah. making more money than the US Open. Yeah. So, you know, for anyone that says fashion is a load of nonsense, you yeah. know, realise what it's contributing. And it's, really? it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, in the I next can't few wait weeks, to see what, what, what the next, um, next show is bringing. London's up next. Yeah. So, yeah, watch this. Space. And Ola Johnson, we love you. The best. Amazing, the best. amazing. That's it. We talked far too long. Thank you, Willie, for joining us. Next up, Lou and I will be looking at some autumn denim and capsule picks on the high street. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Toby. I am the founder of my bump pay. This is just very much my reality as a mum. Trying to get ready and I always have an assistant. I think somebody who's gone and used to taking his temperature during these times. Anyway, he's about to go off to nursery. I wish I could say I cook breakfast. I don't. Um, it's just so busy. So we have these mama made porridges, which are an absolute game changer. So I'm just wrapping up this morning session of work because I know the baby is going to wake up any minute, but I've just been working on our masterclasses and our masterclasses, I love doing them. But basically we work with women who are maybe thinking about having a family or already pregnant. Um, and that's kind of like an antenatal class for your career. Gosh, being on maternity leave and kind of being in lockdown a little bit was something I found really, really, really difficult. Having a relatively new baby <laughs> and a very energetic toddler locked up in the house but um, I'm just really grateful that we are all healthy we are all happy um, and these actually I wanted to show you these are beautiful I got these for my birthday again via classless who shop sample sales or have access to really 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 exclusive sales they're stunning Oh, 
Welcome back, everyone. Now, I'm joined by Lou, She Likes It's Style Director, to talk us through some, well, the capsule basics and denim on the high street. We're actually talking about Gap. Yeah. Um, we've been doing a bit of work with Gap recently, and it's really made me kind of realise we don't give them enough credit no. for doing these really good essentials that we need in our wardrobe, like denim, like white shirts, yeah. at affordable prices. Definitely. And I think definitely this time of year, you want to be, you know, updating your wardrobe with these key pieces. And yeah, Gap, amazing. Denim, cottons, amazing. So let's start with this jacket. Incredible denim, oversized kind of shirt, jacket. We love a jacket here at Sherlux. Um, and this one is fab. I love that. I actually haven't seen any of this, so it's quite exciting. <laughs> we did an amazing shoot recently with Adventures of Us. Yes. Um, but I haven't seen this product. I love that. Yeah. It's, quite, really? it's a little bit acid wash, isn't it? It is. And I think... You, Always with these, you want to go oversized. Um, I think this one is a medium. Yeah, medium. Um, but yeah, great with double denim, great with white, over a dress. Beautiful. Love this. Right, but normally you see more, it's either a denim jacket or a sort of cotton yeah. jacket. That's a real mix of the two. It's a little bit more like trend lead for Gap as well. It's very soft, Very that. soft. I really like it. Yeah. I really like it. Um, Useful for this time of year. Yeah. Another key denim piece is a oversized shirt. Um, I've got a fab one from J. Crew, but this one is giving it a run for its money. I love this. Nice. Again, super soft, chambray, um, such a simple piece to style. Great with leathers. I, I, lo I love that with that look. Um, yeah, really nice. It's really, I like that it's really paired back. Yeah. I've got a few um, gap denim shirts that I've had for years and they're yeah. a little bit more western. Yeah, sometimes this they have the pockets bit, here with yeah. little poppers. Um, yeah, a little bit more refined, this one. Yeah, it feels a bit more kind of scandy. Yeah, and, yeah. Just cool. love that. It's cool, really Again, like that. size up always. Always then, size up on the denim shirt. Yes. Yeah, so um, Cotton's basics. We've seen a lot of this style t-shirt hanging around. You've got a very similar one inspired by the Frankie shop. These t-shirts with these shoulder pads. So we've got black and white. I mean, these are just going to work so hard in your wardrobe right now. Those are great. Yeah. And the Frankie Shot ones, I mean, I was wearing a Bash one the other day. The Frankie Shot ones are big. Yeah. And, and they're really, they're quite a statement. They show a lot on yeah. the arm. That's just a little bit more of a subtle wearable Yeah, that, that's way not to too do low around the side. So if you're nervous about dabbling with the trend, then this is a good way to start Love with it. those. What a great find. And also How much such are those? 19 quid. Yeah. So good. And also, I'm really fussed about the rim on a t shirt. Me too. I think those are Me too. Real, excellent rim. Really good ones. Um, I, I buy so many of my white t shirts from Gap. I really, I, I bought some great ones recently. Yeah. You just have to have a good hunt around. And... I think this one's then going to be right up your street. Again, it's super, super Ooh. simple, but this is a sort of a feather light, long sleeved white tee. Sorry, can we look at the cuff on that? So good, right? It's like long, that poking out of a jumper with the sleeves up. And it's a bit oh. thicker as well. Oh my God, I love that. I'm so going to buy that. Yeah, but yeah, great layering basic. You know, you could put blazers, knits over the top of this, just fab. Um, really nice. Super soft as well. Really um, nice. I normally buy a small in a Gap t-shirt. I okay. would say if you're buying online. Yeah. It's quite true to size. Yeah, I agree, definitely. Um, then some jeans. So we first up got this incredible pair with this rip. And I am obsessed with the wash on these. Aren't they good? Oh my God, they're so good. Actually, Laura, we've all been asking love Laura. These. Our deputy editor, where some of her jeans are from, and yeah. she's often wearing Gap. Yeah, they're great. And she looks great in them. These are the Cheeky Straight, which actually I have got in the Et Crew from a few years ago, and they've lasted really well. Um, high rise, fitted through the hip and thigh, hits just above the ankle. Yeah, love that I wash. I really like that wash. Um, super cool. And then we've got a white sort of cream cream pen, not, not, not white, um, a little bit more high-waisted, slightly tapered down the leg, sort of slightly more directional fit. Um, but yeah, great, great piece of cream denim. I love those. I think cream is so, it's just very subtle. Yeah. And white can just, it can go a bit grey. I think that's... Much cooler, I think, in yeah, a really kind of nice. this colour. A um, nice dress. Oh, I love all in creams. So, so chic, nice so chic. As well. Then we've got some classic shirts. Again, we're going through all the basics, all the classics that you need. Um, this one has got this beautiful pleating detail around oh, the front. That's nice. um, so a little bit different if you, if you know, great for workwear, but if you want to add a little bit more interest to your classic white shirt, then this is going to be a great option. Yeah, I love that. Really nice, really nice. Then we've got this one with a slightly higher Ooh. neck. Slightly- Are you not the wrong way around? No. Oh, is that the front? That's the front. I guess you could wear it both ways as well. Oh, I see, right. back. 
Oh, I see. Okay. But yeah, you could probably style I it however, that. however you want. I've got a Ganny um, yes, you do. shirt from last season with a neck. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit more exaggerated, but it's not dissimilar to that. I quite like that, even like rolled up like that, yeah, just to make a bit jumper. more of a statement. That's great. So nice, right? Tucked that in. so nice. I think it comes in a blue as well. Does it? Yeah. Um, then Bottom what's back, this one? Top, Oh, this is cool. Again, so it's super classic at the front, oh, but then a little bit cropped. Look, and look at the way it's rounded there. And at the back. A couple of buttons at the back. That's cool. Cool, like, directional details. Which, again, really you like that. With a high-waisted, yeah, yeah. high-waisted denim. So nice. Love that. High-waisted straight leg, straight leg leathers. Yeah. I think that's so chic. So nice. Um, then some Cardis. This is a 100% merino wool. Again, a really great light layer. We've seen a, lo like a lot of chunky knits in the past, but nice to see something a little bit, a little bit fit more fitted. Um, again, great with like a tailored pant. Mm. Gorgeous. Great for basics like and that. They, they do so many different colours of these. And you often can get like a good deal on a couple of those yeah. as well, which I love. And finally, finally, long line grey cosy cardi. It's Heaven. obviously super hot right now, but it's not going to last. So this is such a great piece when you come home from work, you want to get cosy at home, or equally this with a big statement belt mm. over some black skinnies, an amazing white shirt. And I think, you know, shirts are big right now and everywhere. And, you know, I love knitwear, but I don't want to wear a big jumper every day. No. So I love that you can get a bit more out of yeah. less winter pieces with something like this. I mean, I've got a navy cardigan a bit like this yeah. that I just live in in the winter and I just put it over everything. Yeah, because you want to ruin the outfit underneath as well. Yeah. If you've got an amazing dress or a beautiful neckline, you don't want to kind of conceal that. So a cardi is Such the a useful thing to have. Yeah, so many great oh, I basics at Gap right now. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. I, I don't know where I'm going at lunchtime. <laughs> I'm going straight to Gap. There's, there's one down the road. Um, thank you, Lou. Now, next up, former showbiz and royal editor of OK Magazine, Chrissy Reeves is here with all the latest celebrity gossip. But first, Tor is back with the next instalment of her wellness series, and this time it's on gut health. Hi, I'm Tor, and I'm Sherlock's wellness editor, and welcome back to my supplement series. Today, I'm going to be talking about gut health. So many studies have shown that so much of your immune system lives in your gut. I think it's up to 80% or something crazy like that. And 75% of your serotonin, which is your happy hormone, is produced in your gut. So, I mean, it's never been more important to think about your gut health. So first up, I'm going to talk about Simpro, which is a really clever liquid probiotic. Now, when you take a capsule, that actually triggers digestion. So as your probiotic is going down your digestive tract, it actually gets broken down, meaning that by the time it's got to your tummy, not all of the probiotics can get to work. But Simpro, which is a liquid formula, doesn't trigger digestion, which means it's super, super strong and really gets to work where it's needed. The one thing that's worth noting about Simpro is you have to take it on an empty stomach so it can really get to work. Now, with this one, you need to take it for probably about three, four months months before you see results but it is incredible and if you're not convinced go on the website because the studies and the research and the reviews are really really mind-blowing so that is definitely one to check out so next up is Willie's apple cider vinegar now apple cider vinegar is a fermented food so it's not a probiotic but like sauerkraut kefir miso it's fermented which means it's packed full of beneficial bacteria and this one is one of my absolute favorites now when you're buying apple cider vinegar you always have to look for with the mother or sometimes it says the live mother and this means that it's full of the bacteria that you're really looking for and this one comes in a nice dark bottle to preserve the ingredients but if it's in a see-through bottle you can actually see the mother and it kind of is a cloudy kind of stringy thing and it might look a bit gross but that's a definitely a good sign so something you should be looking out for when buying your apple cider vinegar. Um, I have this daily and actually it's particularly good before a rich meal so whether it's something quite carb heavy or fat heavy really really good just mix a kind of couple of teaspoons with a little bit of water um, I have it one in one of my espresso glasses and you're good to go. So I'm now going to talk about the new co's prebiotic and probiotic which is a really really clever formula. Now when you buy a probiotic you often see in terms of the strength 50 billion, 30 billion strains. And this one actually contains spores, which is really clever because a bit like this improved one, they don't trigger digestion, meaning they get to work right in the small intestine to ensure maximum potency. And what I love about this one is that unlike most probiotics, this doesn't need to be kept in the fridge, making it really great for traveling, keeping in your desk drawer, really, really good. Absolutely love the Nuco. 
So next up is another Nuco product. I'm a really big fan of the Nuco, and these are digestive enzymes, which actually weren't on my radar until kind of beginning of lockdown time, and they have been such a savior, so I really, really want to share the love. Um, this de-bloat contains digestive enzymes, which you actually make yourself when you digest your food, but sometimes you need a bit of a helping hand, whether it's stress or hormones, not chewing your food properly, they make such a difference. So this one contains three different enzymes, which help to digest your protein, your fats, and your carbs, um, as well as turmeric, ginger, and cinnamon to really give everything a bit of a helping hand and just to settle a bit of a stressed out stomach. The Nuco is also really good because when you go to buy it, you have the option to subscribe, um, meaning you can save 20% on the product's overall cost. So brilliant if you're looking for a long-term solution to your gut health. That's it from me, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, if there's anything you want me to cover, any supplements or areas of supplements, please, please just give us a shout and hope to see you very soon. Thank you, Tor. Brilliant advice as always. Now I'm joined by a friend of the show, Chrissy Reeves, former showbiz and royal editor of OK Magazine. She's here to give us the lowdown on the most recent showbiz goss, which is finally starting to get going again, thank God. Thank God. I mean, it's heating up, isn't it? It's been such a drought. Oh, we needed know. it. We need a bit of light relief. Thank we you do. for coming back on the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. Um, we're going to start off with Royals. It's your bread and butter. We can't it not really talk about is. the Royals. Yeah, so Kay, obviously, Touch of Cambridge has been excelling herself again. Her and the Queen um, have been working together alongside the uh, National Portrait Gallery to release um, a great new online digital exhibition about portraits in lockdown. So it's been really, really lovely. It's amazing. See, it's so moving seeing these shots. There's over 31,000 applicants. Oh, they just had to pick 100 of, out of those. And it was just that they had three themes. They had acts of kindness, helpers and heroes, and then also um, your new normal. So it's been an interesting one, really, um, just seeing different aspects of people's lockdown. I know. So yeah, so they were photos taken during lockdown. So there's lots of nurses, oh. lots of um, granny and grandpas, grandparents in sort of old people's homes waving through windows. Yeah. And I, I'm not even joking. I cried when I read some of the captions. Oh. And it, I found it so emotional. There's one picture of a mother holding her toddler, oh. leaning into her granny, asking where her grandpa is, and he died. Oh. And it was these three generations who'd lost a father, a husband, and a grandfather. And oh I mean, literally now, it's sort of, yeah. it's an amazing thing she's done, isn't what it? What a great thing. And also, you know, I've always th thought throughout, because everyone has such different experiences of lockdown, don't they? You know, seeing all these different aspects, and there was one NHS worker just with her head and her hands in a hospital. And then yeah. on the other, other side of the pitch, you kind of get a woman, you know, a mother in the garden, and with chaos yes. around her, with a little toddler in the background Peeing naked. in the background. And she's, she's holding a drink, which is definitely alcohol. <laughs> Before 12 o'clock, midday. <laughs> I love that one too. And then an amazing one of a woman who'd given birth oh. and had to kiss her newborn baby through a piece of plastic. Yeah, like, it's right. just, oh. these, these, vis these visors, you know, it's just kind of how life has been in 2020. And it's just mm. so alien, isn't it? Mm. But it's and a really good and... exhibition to get involved in and just look at, just to just to immerse yourself in it. It's called Hold Still and it's gone online now. So It's online, yes. National Portrait Gallery's website, yes, is that right? exactly right, yes. Watch it, watch it. You can't not be moved no, by no, these can't. incredible pictures just mm. taken by... Everyone is, yeah. it's, anyway, and I think. The Queen's been praising it as well, which is Well, nice I mean, Kate can't put a step foot wrong, can she? I mean, she, <laughs> she is can't. literally, what is it? Foot perfect? Step perfect? Foot wrong. Foot wrong. Can't no. put wrong. Anyway, let's go with that. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, on the subject of royals, it's Harry's birthday. It is. Happy birthday. 36 today. Quite nice, happy actually. Birthday. No feuds involved with, you know, William and Kate. They've wished him happy, happy birthday on Instagram, which is nice. Let's hope that that's all happy. Yeah, yeah I, hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Definitely. Um, talk to me about the Queen. The Queen, um, she's had a very peaceful summer, I uh, assume, in Balmoral. She's now recently moved to Sandringham, uh, where she will spend some time with, uh, private time with Prince Philip. Uh, next month, she goes back to work. I mean, she's 99. Can we just talk about this? She's 99 and she's going back to work. She's probably doing more who working. Who can criticise her? Like, who can criticise her? Oh, she's amazing. 99 and she does what she does. Sandringham, that's the Norfolk one. Norfolk, yes. And so next month, she goes back to work. So she'll be basing herself a lot. Windsor Castle. And then she will only go to Buckingham Palace just for engagements. Uh, she hasn't been at Buckingham Palace since March, since the pandemic hit. So... I think it's going to be Why quite... Why is that? A bit pokey? Social distancing? <laughs> I just think she probably wants time out of the city, do you think? Yeah, Just maybe. kind of 
bolted, you know? I mean, it's so freaking big. I remember someone telling me how big Buckingham, I can't remember even what the square footage is. Google it. It's absolutely Let's enormous. Um, Home well, goals. It's not exactly like being <laughs> in the city, but anyway. No, no. Um, so she's, she's going to be based in Windsor. Yeah, God, yeah but again, how incredible is she? Just, mm. I can't get over her. She's 99. We were just saying how excited we are for Series 4 of The Crown. Oh, my gosh. October, isn't it? Next month. I think so. Yeah. Um, someone was saying that Di it's all, it's Diana is in this one and they recreate her wedding. And oh, I, I mean, just can't wait to see that. I mean, it's going to be quite moving as well. So exciting. Yeah. So exciting. Uh, we can talk about breakups, which is a bit <laughs> gloomy, isn't it? Yes. But unsurprisingly, it's not all been... Yeah, I think Happy we've, uh, we've, we've seen makeups couples. and breakups this year. I think the breakups have been a little bit more current than the breakups. Quite makeups. a lot of breakups yeah, on the list. Yeah, there has. I think there has. And also, it's inevitable, isn't it? People are spending more time together during the lockdown. You know, filming schedules aren't what they were. So, they're spend, you know, it's the biggest test, isn't it? So, also, yeah, you or I live with our husbands, you know, 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> the others, they're off on set for six months. And then suddenly you're like thrown into the oh, oh my gosh your underwear's on the you know they're like what the yeah. have the beckham's done i'm really happy. i know i don't know have a few anyway. homes there's Cops all on. these sort of rumors i'm gonna get in real trouble and there's all these sort of rumors i'm like they've definitely been together i like to think that they're now blissfully happy and united yeah they've in got my, a hot tub in the pool you know in my little world they're having a fabulous time in the cotswolds um anyway that's life Best life, not so much for everyone else. No, so we've had Sienna Miller and Lucas Wemmer, who's actually a gallery owner. Um, they actually were said to have got engaged last year, so that's a sad one. Shame, I'd like um, to find someone. Yeah, me too. Um, Megan Fox, another another actress, she's uh, was uh, with, with uh, Brian Austin Green. They have three children together, which is a shame. Isn't they she a nightmare though? Didn't she split up with someone? Because anyway, she's so, you're so, you're so for life. She's not saying anything. I say all the things I'm not supposed to say. I love you for that. you're just very professional. <laughs> Um, can't remember. There was something a few years ago. Anyway, sad because they've got three children. Yes, always sad with children involved. Um, Talk us through Mary Kate Olsen and Oliver Sarkozy. Yeah, this is a sad one, isn't it? I mean, she's so he's got quite a bit older. I mean, yeah, controversially. But how were they still together after all that time? I mean, quite a weird match. Maybe there's something that goes on behind closed doors that we don't know about. Who knows? <laughs> and is Carla Bruni still with the other Sarkozy? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. I believe so. Yeah, that's a, that's a keeps giving that one, doesn't okay. it? Anyway, it's not all breakups. No. Can we talk about Lily Allen? Can we talk about Lily Allen? Her wedding, I mean, it's Amazing. David Harbour, Stranger Ship Things. Their, their relationship fascinates me anyway, just because they, they're quite vocal on Instagram. And they did what everyone should do in 2020 for a lockdown wedding. They jetted off to Vegas with her two daughters, Edith and uh, Ethel and, Mar and Marnie, and they did the typical Vegas wedding. They had the Elvis impersonator. They had an in and out burger reception. They just went everything. They did everything that I would want to do if I did a Vegas wedding. I don't really know anything about him because I'm not a Stranger Things viewer. I wasn't, but I'm now obsessed with him on Instagram because they're just oh. really funny together. And he's, they do a lot of videos and it's worth a look, oh, actually. I should find it. Yeah. But they just look so sweet and happy. And they so just, sweet. Even though she's this tall and he's this tall, <laughs> they just look like a really cute couple, I think. I really hope that she has a happy time with him. Yeah, me too. And she's one picture on Instagram she of her gazing into his eyes and she had this beautiful Dior white dress on and she just looks like a 60s princess. Yeah, no, she does. Amazing. She's cute. rocking it. Yeah. I know, I know. Well, so not all. Not all not doom and doom. doom happiness too um we're going to finish on the kardashians it's the end keeping up the kardashians have been going now for 20 seasons 14 years 14 years uh, 2007 really? was the first ever episode of the kardashians wow. and apparently uh as a family the kardashians and the uh jenners have decided that it's the end so they are calling time on the show the last series will be the last episode sorry will be in uh, early next year so it's, a, it's I haven't watched it for years. Have but you not? I, you've got to give it to Chris Jenner. We were saying earlier. I mean, she it, it's it is the most amazing machine. It's, and I mean, it's the endorsement deals. I mean, think how many. I mean, they they were great. We were talking about earlier. You know, they graced so many Vogue covers. They just excelled in so many, and it's paved the way for the reality stars over here in the yeah. UK. Towie, you know, it's all born yeah. from them. And they've also built like really successful businesses. You yeah, know, it is a it is. They do their own PR. Yeah, and. and They've got the viewers and then they launch brand and they absolutely Nail it. kill it. Mm. So, you know, it, it's, it's impressive. Whether you like them or not, yeah. it is impressive. Whether you want that life or not, I mean, mm. each to their own. Mm. Um, but, but I think it's, you yeah. know, 
You've got to give them a bit of credit for that, I think. Definitely. Um, we were saying that it looks like the Kardashians are being replaced by Selling Sunset. <laughs> I think they might be. There seems to be a bit of love at the Sherlock's oh. office for Selling Sunset. I don't know how I feel about it. What about you? I'm on the fence, OK? So I like the whole ballsy women empowering other women. Let's not talk about men and dating. Let's just talk about something different. We just talked about men, so... Sh oh, yeah, sorry. But I do almost think, oh, is it going to go down? I've heard one of the stars from the show is now going to be on Dancing on Ice. So Dancing with the Stars, sorry. So I think, is it going to go down that reality route of you know, couples and I don't know. What's your, what are your thoughts? Uh, I just feel like in 2020, women wearing very little, with having had as much enhancements, as many enhancements as they've had, I just feel like it's perhaps not the right. They're not perhaps the right role models for. No. no. Okay. I, I, yeah. I kind of I, I tried it and it pained me to watch it and I right, quite okay. like a bit of trash. And you love property. And I, yeah, I like a nose around a house, but I just, yeah. It felt very, very scripted Maybe to me. Maybe should stick to through the and, keyhole. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> keyhole. Don't worry about that. Anyway, and, and then it kind of leads into Below Deck and all of this stuff that seems to be replacing it. Anyway, yeah. I, I, I was a fan of Love Island, so I'm being quite hypocrite in saying I'm not sure I approve of setting sunset. No, but, okay, yeah, anyway. I'm, I'm on the fence with you, I think. Anyway, uh, um, can we finish off, though, on Kim and Chrissy? Yes. And she's had a bit of criticism hasn't so she? So Kim hasn't had a great week she had, was criticised she's um, brought out this really impressive actually underwear range for it's called Skims it's for post and pre baby um, uh, bodies and oh, she's so purely for, for I think it, women pre and post yes okay. yes and so it <laughs> She's been criticised by women saying we should be celebrating, which I agree with, you know, we should be celebrating the woman's body no matter what. But it, actually, she's gone back on Instagram and said it's not to slim, but just to support. So her good friend, Chrissy Tijin, who never holds back when Love it comes her. to humour, she's done some really good video uh, footage of uh, posing in the underwear. She's pregnant herself. I'd watch her reality show. So would I. I'd she's amazing, that. isn't she? Love him. Um, she's amazing. Uh, but yeah, she uh, she just said, you know, hey, pregnant person here, uh, this this is just really good, supportive, and yeah. she made some vagina gags, which is hilarious. But you must watch them. I must. <laughs> I must. Fun. But yeah, so so Krim was criticised for for creating shapewear for pregnant women. Yes, but when when some people were saying we should be celebrating it, so I actually think she's done a good thing. You know, yeah. she's whatever she turns her hand at, she does it turns to gold, doesn't it? Doesn't she? And I you think you definitely get a bit more wobbly when you're pregnant. Absolutely. So I'm I would be all for if I was pregnant again. Yeah. Sucking it in. Absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah, me too. I, know. I think everyone's just a bit jealous, aren't they? Yeah, the definitely. success that the Kardashians have had. Is, yeah. You know, people don't like... I don't like it that much. No. Thanks, Chrissy. Oh, love nice. a good natter. Love a bit of a gossip. Um, Thanks so fun to have you. Please come back. Um, thank you also to Lou and to Winnie. As usual, all the product mentioned in today's show will be linked in the notes below on our next show. Laura Black and Charlotte Collins will be showing you what's hot at H&M Home. And there are some amazing pieces at incredible prices. Plus, Hannah Martin is back showing us how to apply the perfect lip liner so don't miss it in the meantime do please comment below with anything else you'd like to see and tell your friends thanks so much for watching bye bye